All right, so the mask is pretty good so far, but select subject didn't quite capture all the model's hair. For example, some of the strands coming off of the bun in the back of the model's head are discontinuous. In Select and Mask, the Refine Edge Brush tool is designed to make edges with challenging details. So zoom into it, so you're zoomed into this, and you, if what we're going to do is working on this right here. So select the Refine Edge, Refine Edge Brush tool. Set up a brush with a size of 20. and a hardness of 100. If you use a tool to make the initial selection instead of the select subject, click the refine hair button. It should result in a, man a less manual brushing with the refine edge brush tool. So drag the refine edge brush tool between the hair bun and the ends of the hair where the selection needs to be improved. As you drag the refine edge brush tool over the hair edge, use the should see that the missing hair strands falling from the bun are now included in the visible air area. So click and drag down here. Same thing over here. Drag your brush over this and it's going to show you some of those. Select subject correctly masks so let's do this. I shouldn't have said that. Select subject. I scroll down so you see the back of the hair that falls on our shirt. And when we did the select subject, that correctly masked the background inside the hair loop. However, a more subtle hole still needs to be revealed the podcast background. So you're going to use a refined edge brush to add a hole to that mask. And it's talking about right here. You can see how this is white. And you can actually what this is, you can see through a hole on her hair. So that should be blue. So using the same brush tool let's select the refine uh, tool we're going to change this to 15 with a hardness of 100 and then we're going to drag the refined edge brush tool over the enclosed area that should be transparent so this area right in here is where we're doing that Gaps in the hair should become masked as transparent and fine hairs are added to the visible edge. Click the view option and then choose black and white. When you do that, uh, it will more clearly evaluate the mask edge. Inspect the mask at different magnifications. Uh, so you can zoom in, you can look around, you can see that's what we worked on before and then view and then fit on screen once you're done viewing that. So, Black areas indicate transparency. If you see hairs or other details that are masked but should be visible, drag the refined edge brush over them. The finer the details you want to mask, the smaller you should set the refined edge brush size. It's okay if the brush size is slightly larger than the details you want to mask, and you don't have to drag the refined edge brush tool precisely. If you see the refine edge brush tool mistakes that need to be erased, such as inner areas incorrectly added to the mask, you would drag the refine edge brush tool over the mistakes while holding the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on a Mac. If you see individual spots or discrete areas that need to be fully visible or fully transparent, you can paint them out using the brush tool, the third one down in the toolbox. To make areas visible, paint them with white. To make areas hidden, paint them with black. You can also drag the lasso tool to enclose any areas you want to add, subtract, or intersect with the mask depending on its mode in the options bar. So let me ask you a few questions. Keyboard shortcut to temporarily use the quick selection tool in subtract mode when it's set to the add mode is, we just talked about it, it's holding down the alt key on Windows or the option key on Mac. To mask edges with challenging details, which tool should you use? And that's the Refine Edge Brush Tools, what we've just been using. What happens when you double click the Zoom tool in the Tools panel? Anybody know? It returns the image to 100% view. At this point, the mask is in good shape, but needs to be tightened up a little. You can tune the overall appearance of the mask edge by adjusting the global refinements settings. 
Click the view menu in the view mode section and change that to on layers. This lets you preview adjustments over the episode background layer which is behind the mode layer. In the global refinement section, move the sliders to create a smooth unfeathered edge along the face. The optimal settings depend on the selection you created but they'll probably be similar to what I'm about to show you. So let's move the smooth slider. I'm going to type in 1. Uh, contrast, I'm going to put 20%. And shift edge, I'm going to put minus 15%. So moving the smooth slider to 1 reduces the roughness to the outline. Contrast to 20% sharpens the transitions along the selection border and shift edge to minus 15% moves the selection border inward and helps remove unwanted background colors from selection edges. Adjusting shift edge to a positive number would move the border outward. So you need to pay attention while using global refinements. For example, if you adjust smooth and the mark edges starts to round corners or grind down to important details, that means smooth is set too high. Similarly, setting feather too high can create unsightly halos along the edge. So, take one more look at this preview of the current mask over the background layer and make any remaining corrections as needed. So, I, I said this before, but what color should you paint onto a mask in order to completely hide the portions of the image you are painting over? Is it white or black? It's black. So when you are satisfied with the mask preview, you can create its final output as a selection, a layer with transparency, a layer mask, or a new document. That's right here. Those are your choices down there, which we'll get to in just a second. If you mask many images that need similar settings, click the preset menu and choose Save Preset to create a name preset of select mask and properties that you can apply at any time. If the output selections are hidden, it's talking about these right here, you may have to scroll down. Uh, so show these output settings. Zoom in to 200% or more. So that you can more easily see the light fringing around the face edge that's due to the model layer's original background color seeping in behind the mask. Select decontaminate colors. Just check this box right here. You notice right here, watch right here when I select that. You see some hair came back. If decontaminate colors creates unwanted artifacts, reduce the amount until the effect looks the way you want. So right here it's at 100%. So if, if you you can drag it down. If, if you don't like what it's here, drag it to whatever floats your boat. Okay. Choose new layer with layer mask right here. Output to. And then click OK. In the layers panel, the model copy layer now has a layer mask. You see right here we have a model copy layer and there's our layer mask. The layer was copied because using the decontaminate colors option requires generating new pixels. The original model layer is preserved and automatically hidden. If you want to start over, you could delete the model copy layer, make the original model layer visible again, and select it and open selected mask again. So you could do that, you could hide that, you could delete that, so on and so forth. But that's what we have right now. If you had not selected decontaminate colors, it would have been possible to choose a layer mask output option that would have added a layer mask to the model laying without copying it. So if we had not done that decontaminate, whatever that was, it would be on this layer right here. If the mask isn't perfect, you can continue to edit it at any time. When a layer mask thumbnail is selected in the layers panel, you can click select and mask button in the properties panel. Click it in the options bar. If a selection tool is active or choose select and select and mask. So let me ask you this. What are the optimal global refinement slider settings? 
And if I were to give you a bunch of different ones like smooth 100, contrast 10, feather 0, or smooth 20, contrast 0, feather 5, or would the optimal settings depend on that selection? That's what it would actually be. It depends on what your selection is. So they're always going to be different. There is no standard.